Hello, mate. It's Friday night. Um, even though I didn't even know it was Friday until my missus told me. Um, my days in the week have all got jumbled up. So it's all these late nights and early mornings with the tennis and, and everything else that goes with it. Um, so shall we crack right into it? Because there's a lot to be said uh, in this coldy, coldy winter week that we've been in. Absolutely, Johnny. I can completely concur with you with temperatures of minus six here in London, which is, you know, unusual at the best. I've got my brandy in my hand and I want to talk about what a day. Yeah, indeed. So we've got to start with him. It's Novak, Novak Djokovic. Um, well, I was watching that match. And basically, Novak was just steaming through, um, in, uh, went up two sets to love. Obviously, the first set was tight, 7-6, um, was in total control. And then suddenly, he was stretching for a ball and seemed like he had some kind of injury. But you never know with Novak because you see this a lot of times when he plays matches. Um, but then it all kind of fell apart in the next two sets with Fritz you know, winning 6-3 and 6-4. Um, and then the trainer came on, gave him the anti-inflammatory and he managed to pull through and was quite emo uh, emotive about it with his uh, traditional, typical Novak roar. But for those of you who've got money on Novak, um, I don't think you're going to sleep easy. Let's put it that way. I haven't, by the way. But uh, and I don't think Rob has either. Have you, mate? No, no. Um, absolutely, Johnny. I you know, Nofak was one of my favourites to win the tournament. And that's not because it's such an obvious one. I just completely believed after the last year um, and Nofak being uh, kicked out of the US Open and the fact he didn't uh, win the French Open and the fact he didn't win the ATP mm. final. Um, I just feel it's been a whole year since Nofak won a Grand Slam. Mm. And... Novak really wants to win another Grand Slam so he can catch Nadal and catch Federer. Mm. But I'm not too sure. And the interesting thing about this, Johnny, I mean, at this stage in the competition, Novak has had two matches, as we know, against the USA's Francis uh, Tifo and obviously uh, today against Taylor Fritz that's gone to four sets. And Diavo. Yeah, sorry, Diavo. Um, if it's gone to four sets that doesn't normally happen doesn't normally happen no and yet i'm honestly you know i'm gonna put a little bet and i do not care i'm going to put a little bet on my loss and let me tell you something i've watched my loss play i saw him at the atp um finals a couple of years ago and he is a good player do not underestimate my loss he's number 14 in the world but and this is the great thing about it. And this is what gets me really excited. He has lost 11 times against yeah. Novak. And even in the last Australian Open, he got kicked out by Novak, right? I think it was in the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. Yet this time round, this time yeah. round, you got um, you got Milos, who is on better form than he was before. You got no fact that isn't where he wants to be, and you got no fact with an injury, and you got no fact himself saying, Well, wait a minute, I might actually retire, I might pull out. So, yeah. some of the analysts are saying he might actually pull out during the match. Now, I don't know how bad this injury is, but it looks bad. I don't know whether this is the great no fact doing what he does, the mind games of the other players saying, I might pull out to give that kind of, um, you know self-belief that someone's going to beat him but actually on the day he just does unbelievable tennis or whether actually he really will pull out but I think this could be the time and it's got to happen at some point that it's not going to be 12 um, defeats it's going to be Milos's time to take advantage of Nofak's potential fatigue and I say potential fatigue because he has had two hot matches that have gone all the way, really. So I think Nofak isn't going to be on form on the day. And I completely think that if it goes ahead, 
I do believe that actually I think my loss this time will win it. However, when I look at the odds, Johnny, mm. and I will say this, maybe the bookies kind of think it might go that way because seven to four, it's okay, but it's not great. So I'm wondering whether I put a little bit on now or whether I just see how the first couple of games go. Well, he's saying that he might not even turn up Novak because he's saying that he's a muscle tear and he won't have enough time to recover. Let's hope not because you don't want your stars of the game to be pulled out of a major because of injury. It just really is not how I like I agree. it and how any fans like it. Um, but if he does play, you know, Milos, not Milos. Look, I'm not going to make any excuses. <laughs> we said this in our first podcast we ever did. We don't always get the names wrong. And I'll tell you what, Johnny, you don't always get them right either. That's absolutely right. Um, but Milos, I think you're right has a fantastic chance because it could be the situation where he says, nobody beats Minos 12 times in a row. No. You know, but the bookies sense blood as well, I think. That's why the odds are poor because let's face it, if Novak had won in straight sets like it, it was looking like with um, Fritz, um, the odds would be very, very heavy. Um, the for him and against uh, Raonic, but uh, as that is not the case because of the injury and stuff, whether he, even the bet goes ahead, whether it goes you know void because at the end of the day he pulls out, so we shall see. But that is causing real headlines. And what I've seen from the odds, mate, I looked on the outrights, completely changed. You know, Novak was uh, the favourite, and now they're making Medvedev joint favourite with Team. A three to one. Well, I think, I think I think three. I think Medvedev um, has a very very great chance. Well, um, what did I say? I said it would be the. And for any of you tuning in, just listen to one of our earlier podcasts. I said to Rob with my predictions of uh, the Australian Open, it'd be a repeat of the ATP Tour Finals, Medvedev against Team. Yeah, and and you know what, Johnny, you know what, and I've said this to anyone listening out there. Go back and listen to some of our earlier podcasts. I said, and I will say it again, Nofak has to step up if he wants to win another Grand Slam. Because with Mevedev and Donomit team and Yannick Sinner coming through, you know, I think it's going to be hard. It's not going to be that walk in the park anymore where he expects I'm going to get enough Australian Open and then it's going to be Nadal for the uh, French and then I might get the uh, um, Wimbledon if Federer doesn't play. I mean, I'm not even sure whether Federer is going to win another Grand Slam. Yeah, no, I, I think they're great points. And, and it just seems like with Novak at the moment, he's just having issues upon issues. Something always is happening now. It's ever since, uh, like you said, the last, uh, it's been a year since he's won his last Grand Slam and there seems to be controversy or, you know, being pulled out of the US Open, being disqualified and now injury. But we'll see. Hope not. I really hope not. But that wasn't the match of the ma uh, talk, uh, today, was it? It was no. Dominic team against Kyrgios. Or well, Kyriakos, I, as you like to call him. <laughs> yeah. Well, just before we start, Johnny, just before we start, let's just draw, uh, go back a little bit. There were probably two matches of the day today, um, anyone listening to this. One was the Tissipas match, okay? Now, I wasn't up at 2, 3 in the morning to watch that match, nor was Johnny. No. But I said in our last podcast, if you're going to make a bet, make a bet when Tissipas goes down first set. Because the likelihood is he'll come back and win the second, the third, the fourth. And actually, that match did go all the way to uh, five sets and Tissy Pass won. So, you know what? I never got to see it. I've seen the highlights, but that was going to be a cracking match. But the one that both you and I, Johnny, got the opportunity to watch whilst we've been getting on with our work was the uh, Kyrgios, as controversial as ever screaming and shouting and telling the judge off and, you know, moaning about this and moaning about that. But it wouldn't be Kyrgios if he didn't do that. The crowd were behind him. He was on absolute fire. 
and he certainly put Donomit team through the paces. But you know what? I was pre- I was a bit chuffed because if you listen to my earlier podcast, I was on a bit of a downer. I, you know, um, all my um, bets weren't coming through or I had fallen to peer group pressure and gone with somebody that I felt wasn't going to win, but everyone was saying that they should. But, you know, this time round, I put my money on Donomit team when he was two sets down to come back and win that match. And he did. Yeah. Um, so I, I did say that um, Kokinaskis, uh, I did say yesterday um, he would prove a very, very dangerous, tough opponent against Stefanos. And he absolutely surely did. And unlike you, I, I just couldn't stay up for that one. I really couldn't. Um, if I had done, I would have deployed the strategy of a cash out because he had done what I needed him to have done. He got the first set. So the odds would have gone more in our favor, more in my favor. But hey ho, it wasn't meant to be. But I was correct that he was very dangerous um, because he's just one of those opponents. But he got through Stefanos, so well played. And Kyrgios... Kyrgios, you know, immense talent, just somewhat of a heckle and hide kind of mind is the unfortunate thing. Um, And that's what really stops him uh, winning the Grand Slam and going deep. He really does. He's his own worst enemy. But he went up two sets with team. But I never felt that team was out of it. I felt like as long as he gets off to an okay start in the third set, he'll be able to pull through. And team said in his off-court interview that I think Kyrgios had break points in, in the first game of the third set. And he said, if I hadn't have got those two break points that I was down, um, then it was over for me because uh, it, I wouldn't have been able to get Kyrgios back. But he did. And... That's why team, I think, is is, is going to go all the way, really, uh, to the final, at least. Um, I, I don't see anyone else at the moment in his section of the draw. So that was a cracker. That really was with the crowd. But another big news, mate. No more fans. Yeah, heard that. A crying shame. And that's a weird one, right? Because the other tournaments, everybody knew how that was going to be in terms of it, whether it was closed uh, behind closed doors like the US. So you start off like that, you play like that, and you end like that. The French, yep. we all knew what that was going to be. But it's going to be so hard for the players. They've had all these kind of crowds and atmosphere, and then silence. So we'll see well, who, who deals with that. Well, I suppose they have to do it, Johnny, uh, protect everyone, keep them safe. But I, I don't believe that Kyrgios would have gone as far without the crowd. And, you know, just, just, just to talk a little bit about that, you know, we, we said this time and time again, Kyrgios is a top 10 player. OK, um, do not be misled by his 45th ranking or whatever it is in the world. That's because he hasn't played that much. And. You know, sometimes we, we all know that his, his mentality doesn't always follow his tennis ability. Whereas somebody like Donomit team, he is sewn in, he is fit. Um, there is nobody fitter than Donomit team on the uh, circuit. Um, and mentally, he is absolutely focused. I mean, I could not believe. And the commentators, the world-class tennis players ex-tennis players the commentators that were saying you know at one point I thought like Donovan team this is over when Kyrgios was ahead in the full set and then he decided to do like a a showman type um under through the leg shot legs yeah between yeah Yeah, yeah. didn't work Mm, didn't work and sorry, Johnny, you, you, you need to talk up because no one can hear you, Johnny. <laughs> I know you love my voice, mate. So my, your wish is my command. But yeah, um, he did a tweener and it all went wrong after that, didn't it? To be honest. And I knew it. I knew it yeah. at that point. As soon as that happened, I thought Donovan's going to win and the money's in the bag. Yeah. So you did well out of that one. And that reverses your losing run. Yep. 
and also the other match and i i didn't put a little bet on it um but it, it's an interesting one and you know for all of those out there for all of you out there that listen to our last podcast you know i can't say dennis uh Sharalapov correctly <laughs> he ended up being Denny Sharalapalapalov which caused uh, some laughs but uh, Dennis forgive me but you were the favorite to beat mm. Felix mm. Felix was completely the underdog and great Felix fair. came through yeah, I didn't see fair. that one coming they're good friends and it's, I think it's always difficult to pay your, your friend um but Dennis, I'm going to say out now, I'm going to call it. Dennis hasn't got what it takes to win a Grand Slam. And Dennis... That's a bit harsh. Yeah, Dennis will not be a top five player. He will not win a Grand Slam. I used to be a big fan of Dennis, thinking that this guy, you know, he's, he's the future of tennis. Um, there's something missing, not just his rapping, which is appalling, um it's, <laughs> it's it's there's something missing felix is more talented uh Medvedev, you've got uh also you know sinner other players are showing more talent attributes for me uh than dennis yeah. dennis is yeah, no be i understand and top 15 player but there's something missing he might prove me wrong and if he does well done but i think something missing there and Felix has got more potential. But Felix, you know, he's got a terrible run of tournaments that he's had uh, in terms of finals. I, I don't think he's even won a single set in any single final that he's been in. And he's been in several and he hasn't even won a single set. Seems like he gets stage fright at the end of the tournament. So I don't anticipate Felix going all the way, but he had a good victory with uh, um Dennis, he has got raw talent and ability, but there's something missing in terms of the final stages. So on the men's side, really, those are the highlights. Novak and Fritz, which went to five sets when you, you thought he never would even touch a fourth set. Um, then his injury plight. Then the match of the day for me, Kyrgios versus team. And then the battle of the youngsters with Dennis and Felix. On the, on the women's side, the women's side seems more... Well, it seems like there's no real upsets at the moment, all going quite swimmingly. I'll tell you one thing, our prediction about Iga is going all wrong, isn't it? About well, she'll have a dip because she's just smashing everyone uh, in front of her like she did in the French. She she, she is, and I love Iga. Um, if you hear that, Iga, I think you're a great player. Mm. Stay playing tennis. Do not go off to university. Yeah. Play tennis. You are a great player. Yeah. But so far, um, the usual suspects for me are still doing it. Yeah. I've still got my money on Osaka. I've still got my money on uh, Barty. You know, they're coming through for me quite quite nicely. Halep again, doing absolutely what Halep does well, you know, coming through the tournaments. Um, Serena Williams, you know, she had a difficult one against uh, uh, Patata Pofa, um, you know, 7-6. 6-2 so a bit of a shaky first set but you know then Serena came through quite quite comfortably but you know um Magarusa as well Johnny you said it you know she she could Magarusa, get to the yeah. final you know she she's doing exactly what she was supposed to do um against Serena Dias you know Serena Dias who who's been doing really well lately and you know knocking out um some good strong opponents got absolutely fresh 6-1 6-1 mm. Yeah, so on the women's side, not eventful. All of the the kind of highlights and, and uh, the talking points have, has been on the men's side today, really has. But let's talk about what's going to be happening tomorrow because it's weekend time, so we can devote more time. And I certainly will be, actually, um, on that. So tournaments, uh, matches that are coming up tomorrow, which grabs my eye and my betting pocket. On the female side, Belinda, Belinda Bencic against uh, Elise Mertens. I'm picking Bencic 11 to 4. I'll have some of that. Thank you. So she obviously is from, uh, from Switzerland. She's been uh, with Roger in many of the Hoffman Cups and stuff like that. Good player. Never quite make, makes it to the end. We actually watched in Wimbledon, mate, when we saw her against Angela um, Kerber. 
uh, yeah. lost. Uh, Angelica Kerber, yeah. I think. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm following your path, Angelica, yeah. Um, but, uh, and she lost for me on that day as well. So I'm starting to question my, yeah, starting to question myself about putting a bet on her tonight, but I've got a feeling she will. Um, what time is she playing tomorrow, Johnny? Mm, yeah, it's a bit of a horrible time. Like three three thirty in the morning, so I don't think I will be able to do that. <laughs> um, I might be up because I might watch the Meverdeath match. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. The one that catches my eye on the men's side is uh, Berrettini against Kashanov. Yeah, I, I was thinking that as well. Um, well yeah. Who's going to win that? No, uh, well, you know, Berrettini came through um, recently with four sets in, in his last match. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these Italians are just at the moment, just, you know, absolutely cracking. Yeah. Um, we've spoken about uh, Berrettini. We've spoken about Yannick Zinner. You know, I I think I think Berrettini is going to do um, quite well. Lorenzo, I think going to the quarterfinals. Yeah. Uh, these are Italy are they are going to be the force of tennis in the next five, 10 years, definitely. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to go for Kashinov, actually. 13 to 8. Well, I might have to have a think about that. Um, I mean, apart, yeah. I mean, apart from that, you've got some obvious ones. You've got Rube Leff. Um, you've got Nadal versus uh Nori, yeah, Cameron Nori, 12 to 1. Yeah, fancy a few pounds on a shop with Nadal's bad back, or do you think that's just good money going down the drain? Being that my wife is Spanish oh. and having watched Nadal play um a few times, and I love Nadal, and being British, anyone that's British understands if they're not Andy Murray. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Exactly. Well, Cameron, there's not... only one Andy Murray, Johnny. No, absolutely. Yeah, we love Andy. Um, the other highlight in the men's is in the morning as well, which is a nice time for us. Uh, Fabio Favini versus Alex de Menure, which is uh, one of the Aussies. Um, he's lightning around the court. Um, four to one on Fabio and one to seven on Alex de Menure. Mm. about Fabio, uh, for all those of you out there listening to this, just watch his YouTube video of what he said to his last uh, opponent when he played. Um, they had a thriller. I think he went to five sets. Fabio won. And as they came to have a handshake, um, instead of turning around and do the niceties, Fabio went to his opponent. He got lucky to even get that close to me. <laughs> or on those lines. And it, you, it's not the kind of thing you tell someone when you've just been in a hell of a match and you've beaten them to say they were lucky to even get that close. So it, watch the YouTube, everyone, everyone on that. He's a he's a real Marmite character. He is. So is that just the good good fighting spirit of a good good fighting uh, Italian tennis player? Again, it's it's the fact, Johnny. They're just so good. At the no, moment. but he he really does roll people, does Fabio. I think he he, he so was, does Nick Kyrgios. Yeah, he does. I think Fabio even made Murray uh, 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 angry in one of their uh, matches. I think he told him to shut up. Murray did um, because he gets under your skin. I'm picking Alex De Manure, I think uh, can't trust Fabio. So basically, guys, the ones to watch out for tomorrow, and where our money's going. I think from what we've just discussed is Berrettini and Kashinov. I'm going for Kashinov. Uh, shock horror, Cameron Norrie versus Nadal. And that would be shock, shock, shock horror. Um, it and, would never happen. Yeah, and then Fabio against Alex Dominia. And then on the women's side, Belinda Bencic and Elise Mertens. And I'm going to pick Belinda. So tomorrow you'll find out whether we've actually got our predictions right or not. Yep. And just to give you a quick heads up for Sunday, the first match I'm thinking about, and I really hope it goes ahead, will be Milos Raonic against uh, Novak. Or, as I would say, Milos Raonic against Novak. I was waiting for you to say that, Johnny. Well, until tomorrow, everybody. Good night. Good night.